the majority of the expensive church buildings that have been built over the centuries have all, in one form or another, been built with huge towers. Each generation of church builders has copied from the former, not even questioning the idea. They have added no spiritual value and Jesus never taught to build them. How then did this tower tradition of church architecture begin? Well, let's let the Catholic Encyclopedia answer. It says, it is a striking fact that most Babylonian cities possessed a temple tower in arts Page 185, Volume 7. Now it is possible that Babylon, as with other things, is the source of this religious tower. We will recall that it was while they were building a huge tower, the Tower of Babel, that the dispersion began. And it's certainly not impossible that as men migrated to various lands with different languages, took the idea of the tower with them. Though these towers have developed into various forms and in different countries, yet the tower in one form or another other remains. Diana of Ephesus, for example, had a tower shape on her head along with the aureole or sun behind her back showing her divinity. Towers have long been established part of Chinese religion. The pagoda, which is linked to the word goddess, is found within that sect. In Hindu religion, scattered above the large temple enclosures are great pagoda or towers rising high above the surrounding countries. Now among the Mohammedans also, though in somewhat different forms, can be seen towers of their own religions. Now all around, in countries around the world, Christian and non-Christians have the towers. Could Mystery Babylon have something to do with it? Now the cross is recognized as one of the most important symbols of the Catholic Church. It's displayed on top of roofs, towers, altars, furnishing, ecclesiastical garments. The floor plan of a lot of churches are laid out in the cross shape. Catholic homes, hospitals, schools all have crosses adorning the walls. Everywhere the cross is outwardly honored and adored in hundreds of ways. Now when an infant is sprinkled, the sign of the cross is made upon his forehead. And during confirmation, the candidate is signed with the cross. Ash Wednesday, ashes are used to make the cross on the forehead. When Catholics enter the church building, they dip their forefinger of the right hand in holy water, touch the forehead, chest, left and right shoulder, thus tracing the figure of the cross. The same sign is made before eating meals. During Mass, the priest makes the sign of the cross 16 times, and blesses the altar with the sign 30 times. Now the early Christians did not consider the cross as virtuous symbols as Catholics, but rather as an accursed tree, a device of shame and death in Hebrews chapter 12 and 2. They didn't trust in the old rugged cross. Instead, their faith was what was accomplished on the cross. And through this faith, they knew the forgiveness of sin. It was in this sense that the apostles preached the glorious forgiveness of sin on the cross. They never spoke of the cross as a piece of wood one might hang a little chain around his neck and carry in his hand as a protector or charm. Such use of the cross came much later. It was not until Christianity began to be paganized that the images of the cross came to be thought as a Christian symbol. It wasn't until 431 after Christ that the crosses in churches and chambers were used, while the use of the cross on steeples was not recognized until 586 AD. Now, in the 6th century, the crucifix image was sanctioned by the Church of Rome, and it wasn't until the Second Council at Ephesus that private homes were required to possess a cross. Now, here unchanged for thousands of years, we find amongst Egyptian hieroglyphics the toe cross, a toe cross familiar to today. This toe cross comes in various forms, but the one especially as the cross of Egypt is the toe cross. The shape of the letter T for Tamaz, or a circle and ovoid above it representing the sun. Yet this mystical symbol was not peculiar to this country, but was reverenced amongst the Chal Chaldeans, Phoenicians, Mexicans, and every ancient people in both hemispheres. Now as the cross symbol spread to various nations, its use developed in different ways. Amongst the Chinese, the T cross is acknowledged to be one of the most ancient devices, and it's portrayed upon the walls of their pagodas, and it's painted upon lanterns used to eliminate the most sacred recesses of their temple. Now the cross has also been a sacred symbol in India. 
India for centuries amongst non-Christian people. It has been used to mark the jars of holy water taken from the Ganges. The Buddhist and numerous other sects in India mark their followers upon their head and chest with the sign of the cross. In Palak, Mexico, founded by Votan in the 9th century, before the Christian era, is a heathen temple known as the Temple of the Cross. The Catholic Encyclopedia includes a photograph of this cross, beneath which are the words, Pre-Christian Cross of Palak. Even Indian tribes used the toe cross as seen. In olden times, Mexican worshipped the cross as tota, meaning our father. This practice of addressing a piece of wood with the title father is also mentioned in the Bible in the Old Testament as a practice of pagans in Jeremiah 2.27. Now they would say unto a stalk, a piece of wood, thou art my father. But it's contrary to scripture to call a piece of wood or anyone by the title father. The Greeks depicted a cross on their headbands and certain coins as seen here. Now the Catholic Encyclopedia acknowledges that the sign of the cross represented in its simplest form by a crossing of two lines at a right angle greatly antedates in both the East and the West and now it goes back to the very remote period of human civilization. Volume 4 page 517. Now crucifixion as a method of death was used in ancient times as a punishment for flagrant crimes of Egypt, Assyria, Persia, Palestine. Many people died on crosses. It was a form of execution. But since Jesus died on a cross, some question, does this not make it a Christian symbol? Well, it is true that in most minds the cross has come to be associated with Christ, but those who know its history and superstitious ways it has been used, especially in the past century, see another side to the coin. Now, though it may sound crude, someone has asked, suppose Jesus had been killed with a shotgun, would this be any reason to have a shotgun hanging about your neck? Now, my friends, let's make it clear. Hundreds of people died on crosses. The two thieves, St. Peter was put on a cross upside down. It was a form of execution. It was a device of shame and death. Blessed is the man who finds wisdom, and the man who gains understanding. For its profit is better than the profit of silver, and its gain than fine gold. She is more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire compares with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who hold her fast. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding he established the heavens. By his knowledge the deeps were broken up, and the skies trip with dew. My son, let them not depart from your sight. Keep sound wisdom and discretion, so they will be life to your soul and adornment to your neck. Then you will walk in your way securely, and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden fear 